the day we showed you the scorecard from Kolebu Teaching Hospital, the oxygen plant. Now, speaking of the oxygen plants that is up and running, there's been some expansion, and that's our scorecard. And we encourage all of you who make contracts to come and attack us. Ask the people who are sending you what their scorecard is. I'm learning with some bit of sadness that at Kolebu, as we speak, there are those who, even though the gas, the, the oxygen plant is running, there are those who say, it is not my job to go and roll the bottles to go and, or the cylinders to go and bring <clears throat> the oxygen to the, to the, what do you call it, to the wards. And people continue to suffer the, the unfortunate situation where there's no oxygen. There are those who also follow the nurses while the nurses are the ones pulling and pushing this. It's bad. You are paid to go and work. And if there is oxygen available where the oxygen is being processed, and because of your negligence, you leave it for somebody on a sick bed to die because you say it is not your job. We have come into Kolebu. We have sent people to Kolebu. And we are secretly recording and taking note. I will expose you on this platform. And I will insist that you are sacked. So all those people in the wards, some gyne, some emergency, some, you know, and it's, it's quite unthinkable that we will come here and advocate for the plants to start working. You will come and complain that the plants are not working. And then when the plant starts working, you come and start saying that it is not your job to go and be rolling cylinders. So whose job is it? So the patients who have come to your facility, should they die? And in fact, people actually die. Why is the fellow feeling? Why is the professionalism? And it cuts across because you find nurses who are not committed to the work. And recently, people have been sharing their dastard experiences about nurses and midwives who are not committed to the work, doctors who are not committed to the work, teachers who are not committed to the work. You find all those things going around you. And you ask yourself, what's going on? You are a nurse, but, but the, the bed pan, you don't want to touch it. Because it is not your job. And at that particular time, it needs to be checked. You are at the, at the place where the oxygen is prepared. You have made a call to people to come and pick the stuff. And it, 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 sometimes it's unthinkable. Why do we do that? Why are we so unkind to ourselves? Why are we so unkind to ourselves? You go to Kolebu, you go to other facilities, and you see family members who do not have the requisite training, the necessary training. They are the ones transporting their patients from one point to the other. So it is not the illness that would end up killing the people. It is actually the bad attitude of professionals who should know better, who will be the first to go on strike, who will be the first to ask for a salary raise, who will be the first to demand for accountability, but fail to be accountable to the system. Change your life because I'm coming for you. Change your life. Today is International Mother Language Day. <clears throat> it is celebrated all around the world, something that is supposed to encourage multilingualism and to ensure that no language is lost. Today I'll be a bit biased towards my language. And I will tell you why. I will, I will give you... I'll make a fine case for it. Today is World Mother Language Day. It is supposed to encourage multilingualism and to ensure that no language is ever lost. Today. Now, let's start with Honorable Sam Jata George. He's the MP for Ningo Pram Pram. He made some statements last week or the week before. It was a re-echoing of something I had said on, on Johnny's Bite sometime in 2021. You remember when the Achimota saga came? The land saga, which our chiefs and my own king said they are still investigating. They have not brought us the, the report. And people still have for, lands in forest reserves forever. I spoke about this matter. And in that particular matter, I raised questions. I was hoping that four years down the line or three years down the line, something tangible would have been done. But no. The issues remain. Here is Honorable Sam Jata George. Today, with the advent of technology and the Judeo Christo religions, many of the things that many of the things that we refer to as our culture have been termed demonic practices. 
And so we're actually walking away from our culture. And Mr. Speaker, as a Dangwe boy from the Gandangwe ethnic group, I, 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 am, I, I am very, very, very worried. Because, Mr. Speaker, in 2017, when I became member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, in the Ningo Pram Pram district, there were 37 Akan language teachers, but there were only two Dangwe teachers in a Dangwe community like Ningo or district like Ningo and Pram Pram. And so there was a shortage of teachers. Mr. Speaker, I made a conscious effort within the, the first four years in office to work with the University of Education, Winneba, which had a bachelor's degree in Dangwe. And we sponsored children to go and, and, and study and get the degree. But Mr. Speaker, that did not solve the problem. You then have the Ghana Education Service post these Dangwe teachers to the, to, to the north or post them to the Ashanti region to go and teach social studies and, 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 and Bible knowledge when they studied Dangwe. So why are you posting them away? And so recently, the Gandangwe Tahuloyake took a stance and said they thought that the Ghana Education Service was intentionally working to kill some languages. Because, Mr. Speaker, if we have trained teachers in our local languages and there is a shortage of teachers in the region, why post them away to go and teach a different language? That's the Honorable Sam Jata George. He's MP for Ningo Pram Pram constituency in the Greater Accra region. Now, he raises this concern, and it's a key concern, because today we are celebrating multilingualism. And the idea is that no language will be lost. And I asked the question the other time in Ghana that Obaya Ashante Manjo, Fante Manjo, Aigbe Manjo, Grushi Manjo, ni a chonga I asked that question. Apart from the greater Accra region, where else in this country would you go to find Ghana teachers? Teaching Ghana. You won't find it anywhere. And when you make the argument and you ask the question why it's not taught in certain public schools, but they are being taught either a Kyapim Chi or a Santi Chi or Fanti, they tell you that, oh, Accra has become cosmopolitan. Is Ho not cosmopolitan? Is Kumasi not cosmopolitan? Is Takradi not cosmopolitan? Is Tamale not cosmopolitan? Is Sunyani not cosmopolitan? You ask the question. And it is supposed to be the policy of the Ghana Education Service and the Ministry of Education to at least have instruction given to children for the first three years of their lives in their mother tongue. But then, sadly, some time ago, we had the whole Valley View School tell us, for example, that they were, they had, they were scrapping the first three years because they couldn't find Ghan teachers. Well, later, subsequently, with some intervention from the uh, Gamancha Palace, they had to rescind that decision. But it is happening today. Children are being taught chi in, in, in Accra. I'm not saying they should not be taught, but the first opportunity that should be given to them should be their mother tongue. Why are they being deprived of that? And uh, I'm sure somebody will ask, oh, well, and, and we'll see if he, listen to the former Chief Justice of the Republic. Justice Sophia Kufu, she sat with Bolare on stature. Listen. She called another teacher who could speak three better. And she said, uh, the teacher said, I should, I should keep bringing my three book. reading book. Mm -hmm. And I should be reading it as they are reading the Gan ah. one. I have the Gan one also open. And uh, so uh, uh, you're reading the same story, you know. Tamishe, you know, can they mommy me okay? You know, so then you learn Abufra Abufra Bonwa or Marty Mikele. Why Jah she jah kuplunto? I remember that that was the first day. But I helped you a lot. Absolutely. By and by the by the second week, third week, oh I was going along with the flow, I was um You're a brilliant lady. You picked up so fast. No, it was because of methodology, mm. Mm. of good teaching. Attention. Yes. Yes, of good teaching. Teachers who... How many were you in the class, if I may ask? Now 
So this is Bolare, former Chief Justice of the Republic, and she is not of Ga ancestry. Maybe she has some Ga ancestry, but at the time, the understanding I got was that she had moved. They had moved from the Eastern region, and then they had come to Accra, and even then there was enough wisdom to suggest that they should be taught gun. Today, the former chief justice is able to speak fluent and lucid gun, but she's not gun. And you saw the methodology. She spoke about methodology. She spoke about good teaching, and she spoke about teachers who have time. Even then, there was no deliberate attempt, as many are suggesting now, to annihilate the gun people. The Gadangbe people. You had some joy. When he took over, there were only two Dangbe teachers in a Dangbe community. And it is once you once you once you take the people's language away from them, you for example take away their culture, and take away their tradition, and take away their confidence. There is some subtle um, attempt to arcanize everything. We don't have a, local, a, a, a current national language. We don't. So then the question you ask yourself is that, what did our members of parliament consider? Did nobody raise a question when we started having a Sempa budget, a Juma budget, in Punto budget, in Kabomu budget, in Koswa budget, a Jinkwa budget, and the last one, the, the, the recent one is what? They are all arcanized names. Now, these budgets are supposed to bring all of us together. And the only nomenclature that we found for them is organization. I'll tell you another example. So, for example, lands, prime lands of the Ga people, prime lands of the Ga people, they are taken away by the states for specific purposes. The rule and the law is that if after some time the state doesn't use the land or those lands for the specific reason that the state acquired them, it should be given back to the original owners, which are the will be the Ga people, the Dangwe people. Today, those lands do not return to the original owners. They will say they have gone into some public-private partnership with some private developers. And if you find the origin of those private developers, they are not Ga people. And I thought that anywhere, the, the land of the people belongs to the people. So why don't you, for example, make a suggestion to the Ga people to say, okay, one man cannot be the investor, so form a consortium so that they can own it. Check the, 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 the prime areas, the DVLA lands, the Flagstaff House lands, all those lands around you, the big, big ones that I've been talking about. Those are prime areas in Ga areas. Check those who are behind them as private contractors and check their origin and ask if the girl people themselves cannot put themselves up together to go and also be given the opportunity to, to handle some of these things. It is unthinkable. It is so unthinkable. And it is a question that must engage Niga. It's a, it's a serious matter. It is a serious matter. Now the people are being pushed into the sea out of their own space. The people are being pushed into the sea out of their own space. I'll leave it here. Let's talk about Napco. They are not happy with, um, what do you call it? They are not happy with um, Dr. Baumia and the team of MPP picking Dr. Ibrahim Anyas. They have a statement. Listen to the statement. Please put the statement up for me. And it's dated the 21st of uh, February, 2024. And it says, your deputy presidential campaign manager, Dr. Ibrahim Anyas, is not credible. NAPCO trainees to Dr. Uh, Alaji Mahmoud Baumia. The coalition of NAPCO trainees is utterly amazed at the courage of the vice president to appoint the incompetent Dr. Ibrahim Anyas, the NAPCO CEO, as his deputy presidential campaign manager. The appointment of Dr. Ibrahim Anyas the NAPCO CEO as Deputy Presidential Campaign Manager for the New Patriotic Party is a clear indication that the Vice President does not have the vulnerable youth, particularly disappointed NAPCO trainees at heart, on the factual grounds that one, Dr. Ibrahim Anyas has failed woefully to respond to our official petition submitted to his outfit for the payment of nine months NAPCO arrears 
after the expiration of the contractual agreement in September 2022. Two, that notwithstanding, the same Dr. Ibrahim Anyas has failed to honor the invitations of the media to explain publicly what has necessitated the delays of NAPCO arrears and the development of the implementation of career pathway transition process, which was eagerly lauded to usher NAPCO trainees into the permanent mainstream jobs after the one-year additional contract period expired. Three, the insensitive posture of Dr. Ibrahim Anyas has subjected vulnerable NAPCO trainees who uh, into extreme anger, hunger and deprivation. We have been copied and uh, we have been crippled and left penniless and highly indebted. Our dignity has been trampled upon and our honor fed to dogs. We attest, we all attest to the current galloping inflation, incessant price increment of goods and services under the chair of President Akufuado and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Do we query ourselves how NAPCO trainees are surviving in their unemployed state? when Dr. Ibrahim Anyas refused and, uh, to uh, add his influential voice for government to release funds to pay NAPCO arrears. Interestingly, these days, the government does not uh, tout NAPCO as an achievement due to the embarrassing fact of unpaid nine months arrears. We want to caution His Excellency Alaji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to immediately withdraw Dr. Ibrahim Anyas from his team. If his appointment as deputy presidential campaign manager is meant to capitalize on the flip-flopped NAPCO scheme to further deceive and hoodwink unemployed youth to vote for him. And fa Again, the coalition is going to intercept any partisan utterances signages that will leverage on the failed NAPCO scheme in an attempt to win votes in the 2020 general elections. The silence of NAPCO trainees is a huge threat to our national security. We shall soon rise to defend our right if conditions remain the same. Frank Evans uh, Kwanza is the national secretary of these uh, people. Now, there are some NAPCO pictures. Pick them. There's a one last Dr. Baumia video on this NAPCO employment. I'll play for you. But show me some of the NAPCO pictures. Remember me. You remember that? One of the gentlemen who came here, we had a conversation with, I think his name is Nicholas. He said he was paid 300 Ghana cities for that remember me thing. And so far, he has become a target. And people think that he's the cause of their problem. There's a lady and a gentleman. He says, remember me. My livelihood depends on you. Please show that. Please show that quickly. Remember me. My livelihood depends on you. This is what was told to the Napco people. Today, a common diomorof. Today, a common diomorof. There's big regret because when they were promised permanency, the president in August 2021, somewhere in the Sunyani place, a radio station said that they were going to be transitioned onto some more permanency. Did I tell you about two, three weeks ago that GRA was training people at Gimpa and to give them permanency? While those who had done NAPCO were still there and they were not even included in that permanent arrangement. GRA, Gimpa. We have our people among you, so they are the same people who come and show us the letters. They are the same people.